Two blonde girls are sitting on a bench reading a book. A scream came and caught the attention of one girl. Everyone in Central Park stops and freezes in place. Some people even started walking backwards. The friend sitting next to her suddenly started saying strange things. Then her hand slowly reached up to her hair and took off her hairpin. She stuck the hairpin straight down her throat. On a construction site here, workers on the roof of the building somehow jumped one by one from the roof and hit the ground heavily. The workers jumped off the building one by one. People started hurting themselves. What was going on here. The school held an emergency meeting after learning about the situation. The principals suspected that New York had been attacked by terrorists. They had released some kind of deadly chemical gas in order to prevent more people from being harmed. He asked the teachers to evacuate the students immediately. The unexpected accident made everyone worried and scared. Elliot evacuated all the students as the principal had requested. Then he was ready to go home, but he was approached by his colleague Julian. Julian wanted the Elliots to go back home to Philadelphia with him. It was said that the chances of a dangerous accident in Philadelphia were low, so they split up and agreed to meet at the station later. When Elliot got home, he saw his wife Alma watching the news about the terrorist attack. The news said that the chemical gas could cause a disruption in neurotransmission and hallucinations. This could lead to some kind of self-harm and loss of life. Elliot felt bad. He rushed upstairs to pack his bags. Then he took Alma to the train station and met Julian. Julian said her wife had to take the next train because of the traffic. She told Julian to take her daughter and Elliot and go ahead. The news was also shown on the TV at the train station. After they dissected the victims, they found out the alleged guess was not a terrorist attack but a natural compound. When the news broke, there was a lot of panic. Several people got their tickets and boarded the train in order. With the sound of the whistle, the train was slowly heading to Philadelphia. But Philadelphia was not safe at this time. The unexplained gas in the park came with the wind quietly here. It seemed like a pause button was pressed everywhere the gas went. People stopped moving. Then a police officer pulled out a gun. After a shot was fired, the police officers fell to the ground with a bang. After he did this act, the next person picked up the gun and also repeated the action of the police officers. People picked up guns one after another and repeated the act and Elliot soon learned it on the train that Philadelphia had also been attacked. Julian called his wife in a hurry, but his cell phone was out of service. He soon received a text from his wife. Julian's wife boarded a bus to Princeton. A few minutes later, the speeding train suddenly came to a halt. All the passengers got off the train without understanding what was happening. Elliot found the conductor and tried to find out what was going on, but the conductor said they had lost contact with the outside world. So now they were forced to stop moving forward. The train and its passengers were trapped here. They had no choice but to go to a nearby restaurant to eat and rest. But the horror didn't stop there. The woman showed Elliot a video of what had just happened at the Philadelphia Zoo. The zookeeper had volunteered to run into the lions. He fed himself to the lions as food. The image was horrific. At the same time, the TV in the restaurant was also showing the news. The government has confirmed that the disaster was not a terrorist attack. According to the reported data, the entire northeast region is currently affected. Elliot saw on the disaster map that was released that they were in the exact center of the disaster. This scared everyone out of the restaurant. They were scrambling to get out of the area in cars from Passersby. Elliot tried to find a ride, too, but not everyone is willing to help strangers in times of crisis. The only people willing to give Elliot a right were Mr. and Mrs. Frank. But Julian said his wife had been missing for two hours. Julian couldn't bear to worry about his wife's safety. He wanted to take a car to Princeton to look for his wife. Julian entrusted Elliot with his daughter's care. When he found his wife, he would come back to join them. So they all parted with reluctance. Elliot followed Frank to the house. They saw a greenhouse full of plants. It turns out that Frank is a scientist who studies plants. He told Elliot the poisonous gas was probably emitted by the plants because humans are constantly destroying the environment and this threatening the survival of the plants. On the other hand, Julian soon arrived at Princeton. The woman in the car saw a scene in front of her and screamed. It turned out that the trees on both sides of the road were full of hanging bodies. At that moment, a sudden gust of wind blew by. Julian immediately told everyone to block the air vents in the car that might be ventilated. But what he didn't expect was, there was a crack in the roof of the car, so the poisonous gas poured into the car. In a short time, the car stopped slowly. Then the next second, the car suddenly accelerated and crashed straight into a tree in front of it. Julian stepped out of the car. He sat it on the ground and grabbed a piece of glass and slid his wrist and lost his breath. 
On the other hand, Frank was driving the car on the road. Elliot suddenly asked Frank to stop. It turns out that he found something unusual in front of him. He took out his binoculars and saw several human corpses lying on the road in front of him. This scared them immediately turned around and left the place. On their way back, they encountered an oncoming military vehicle. Oscar, the soldier who got out of the car, rushed down from the car and came to tell them that the troops had also been attacked by the guests. Everyone is dead. Meanwhile there are people fleeing all over the country. At this point everyone is both anxious and unsure of what to do. Oster immediately took out a map and studied it with Elliot. He then told everyone to split into two groups and go to a small town not far from there. Because it was a path, people had to walk. Elliot and Alma went ahead. Oster followed with a large group of survivors. But they hadn't gone far. There was a sudden gust of wind around them. The survivors stopped one by one. Oster stood still and slowly pulled out his pistol. With a gunshot, Oster just left the world. The next shot came from a distance. Elliot heard the gunshots from the other side, so he knew that a large number of survivors had been guessed and their lives ended. Elliot analyzed the guess and became more convinced that it was released by the plants. He surmised that the more crowded the area, the more likely it was to be attacked. At that moment, the gas came back at them with a gust of wind. For safety's sake, Elliot ordered everyone to split up and run. But how can the speed of a man be faster than the speed of the wind? But this time the wind blew past them and nothing happened. Then they came to a house with locked windows and doors. The people seemed to grab the straw that broke the camel's back. They explained to the owner of the house what they wanted to do. But the owner was not very friendly. He refused to open the door for fear of being infected by the gas. Two young boys get in the door one after another to vent their frustration. This action completely angered the landlord. Without saying a word, the owner stuck a shotgun through the door. He fired mercilessly at the two men who kicked in the door. Elliot and the three men had no choice but to continue their escape. It didn't take long. They came to an old house in the middle of nowhere. Mrs. Jones, who lived there, took them in. Mrs. Jones invited them to dinner and offered to let them stay overnight. While they were talking at the table, Elliot learns that Mrs. Jones lives here alone. She was living in isolation. So Mrs. Jones didn't know that the outside world had been guessed and destroyed, and so they passed the night in peace. The next morning, Elliot woke up and found his wife was not with him, so he went downstairs to look for Alma, but he saw Mrs. Jones outside the house doing something very strange. There was a gust of wind. Elliot suddenly realized something. He rushed back into the house and closed the door. But Mrs. Jones smashed the window with her head. The wind from outside soon blew in. Elliot quickly hid in the room. He used a rag to cover the doorway. At that moment, the voices of Alma and Julian's daughter came from the room. Elliot followed the sound and looked for them. He found the two of them in the opposite room. The two rooms were connected by a pipe. Through this pipe, they could hear each other talking. Elliot told Alma to close the windows and doors. Outside the poisonous gas again with the wind blowing. At this point Elliot had lost the courage to challenge. Finally Elliot and Alma decided to die together. Even if they had to die. So Elliot and Alma both walked out the door. They wanted to spend their last moments together. They held hands and waited for the end to come. But surprisingly, the wind didn't make people lose their minds. The horrible poisonous gas just disappeared on its own. The disaster seemed to win just like that. Three months later, the Elliots adopted Julian's daughter. Survivors are still talking about the disaster. Experts on TV say the release of poisonous gas from plants is an unknown natural phenomenon. It's like a warning. Maybe all this danger is just the beginning. People have already brought threats to the planet, but it didn't end there. One day in the park, people were playing and playing happily. With a gust of wind blowing by, there was a scream. Everyone step stopped once again. Disaster strikes again. The end of the world. As we understand, it is almost always about tsunamis and volcanic eruptions. Or meteorites hitting the earth. This movie is about another source of disaster. Plants. It also illustrates how mankind is constantly taking from nature and destroying it at the same time. Plants are no longer suffering in silence. Plants can also take the initiative to attack humans. Is this nature's revenge on mankind?